Well guys, unfortunately the parking police pretty much evacuated most of the car show. What a shame. And that's usually what happens when you got people who are not using property <laughs> who are trying to ruin everybody's fun. You know, it sucks. It really sucks because, you know, people, they don't often get together and they don't often bring their cars out. And it's a shame because, I mean, what can you say about it? But this Aston Martin makes me happy. <laughs> And the doors, which open up and out, are probably the coolest feature about this. Plus not to mention the convertible top being open. It's got quite a few leaves that fell inside the interior, but I love the hexagonal interior trim that's on the inside. And just look how beautiful the dash and everything's laid out on this car. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow, check that out. All of this is carbon fiber, all of it. Now the car is actually bonded and glued together, believe it or not, at the factory in Aston Martin, which is pretty amazing. And believe it or not, you can actually see the carbon weave on the Vantage through the paint. I mean, if you get a nice angle on it, it's all over the place. The whole car is carbon fiber. I mean, usually when you see paint, you'll see orange peel. On this, you see actual carbon fiber weave on it. I mean, it's all through the car, on the hood, on the fenders, the whole body. And obviously under the hood of Vantage is a six liter V12. <laughs> what a beautiful piece of jewelry. That's gorgeous. I mean, this car is absolutely stunning. And I'm pretty sure Roger Gusty could enjoy everything about this car. It's an absolute, absolute showstopper. I mean, having a front mounted V12 like that, that's pressing on the gas on a car like this is you got to be pushed by an angel it's it's un unbelievable and it's made me happy as opposed to the parking police which completely ruined the car meet but you know what life wouldn't be interesting if you didn't have a couple of trials and tribulations that you had to go through you know and things happen but right here let's go ahead and talk to the owner of this 944 Hey, that's a beautiful 944 you have. Oh, thank you. Looks like the parking guy left. Yeah, no, he, I mean, he totally ruined everything. Yeah. At least in my opinion, he did. Like, but if he left, I will uh, stick around just a little bit longer. <laughs> what do you love about this car? What do I love about it? Do I it? I it's been in the family since about 98, 96, 98. So I've been a fan of the 944 just to watch it racing at the point where I yeah, they, I just they, love the handling. I love how it feels when it drives. It's got the Group B um, versions, right? If I remember correctly, or I'm trying to remember what race series they they raced in. But they had a lot of the uh, the wide body versions before they um, they went to a 944 production model. The 924 was narrower, oh, uh, I believe, right, right. and then the 944 had the actual bulges. And you know, you had the turbo versions, right? Which I mean, this is this car has one of the biggest four-cylinder engines in production. Yeah. You know, so I mean, just the fact that you know you have one of these out here, and probably in the color that's the hardest to take care of, black. <laughs> but I love the you know vintage wheels on it. You know, these are usually seen on 911s, and they are definitely seen on the 944 as well. But I think one of the nicest wheels that these particular cars have, especially the turbos, is the phone dials. You know, okay. I don't know if you remember them. Know. Yeah, I do. But, I, I like the Fuchs. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I know they have the, uh, what they, they look like rotary phone, yeah. phone yeah, dials. Yeah, I and uh, I mean, Lamborghini, I think the Countach had a similar wheel as well. Right. But yeah, no, these are definitely an amazing car to drive. And 
believe it or not, they were the entry level car that you could get into. And when you got the turbo, you were just one um, purchase away from a 928. Yeah. Or actually they went to the 968, which is the evolution of this car, which is kind of the funny thing because the 968 still has that 944, you know, body styling and everything on it. So, I mean, I just, I just love the fact that Porsche gave, you know, a person that wanted to get into the brand an opportunity to get in there right. without having to strive for a 911 right away yeah. but hey thank you for being on the video i appreciate okay. it and the car is amazing yeah, but i like the classic like the styling it's like kind of timeless yeah well i think everybody's you know trying to move towards the classics and a lot of these cars have gotten just way too high tech and not so involving and you know you don't feel like you're driving the car you feel like the car's driving you and you're just a meat puppet inside the you know driver's seat yeah. but hey thank you again right, thank you. but yeah we're trying to get as much out of this show as we possibly can and talk to a few owners at the same time which is one of the reasons why we're supposed to come out here anyway is to see the actual people behind the cars like this gorgeous M5. I mean, can you imagine that you have an M3 and then you have this M5. And the only difference between the, the cars is that this one's larger. But pretty much all of the things you expect from an M model BMW are here. So it's pretty amazing that it's just a M3 stretched and that's the best part about it. But like I said, guys, the show was still good. Turbo Tom's exit kind of was disappointing. And obviously, the parking police kind of ruining everything really sucked. But we're going to go back over to Mouse Ball, and we're going to go ahead and enjoy the hood that Mama Mouse and I put together. And regardless, it's a bittersweet day. At the end of the day, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be one more day above ground and enjoy time with my beautiful significant other the boss mama mouse and to bring her all of the sights and sounds of fuel fed for lardale from this beautiful egg yoked headlight porsche 911 a gt3 of all of all things i mean just cars like this you know they just make the senses go wild. Look at that M3, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the dual biplane wing, the race seats right from the factory, the classic white gauges with the center mounted tachometer, the little bits and pieces of carbon fiber that just give that interior that hardcore racing look. And then obviously the key that's mounted on the left, La Ma style. I mean, it's cars like these, you know, they do everything to the car enthusiasts. They make the heart pump faster. They make your mind go crazy. And they make you forget about the parking police that ruin everything. And right here, a Pantera de Tosmo. This one was seen in a previous video. And damn, it's such a beautiful car. We got more police showing up to ruin everything, probably. Just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, a car like this that's as exotic as a Ferrari and a Lamborghini, but yet has a Ford power plant that you can rely on and is produced by Mr. Di Tommaso who actually was good friends with Lee Iacocca. And this is the car they produced that was actually sold at Lincoln Mercury dealerships, which a lot of people really just didn't know very much about, which is a shame. But guys, we're gonna go ahead and head over to Mouse Ball, and we're gonna head on home and get some work done with the family. And then I'm gonna head all the way over to Mama Mouse's house, go to dinner with a brand new hood that we both have done, and we're gonna enjoy the rest of the weekend. And then I've got a full week of editing to do, which is gonna be 
a lot of work. But anyway, guys, see you in another one.